said, hey, so hope everyone's doing really well. Um, I recently just came across this topic related to React Native and make a request with Axios to an Express API. And this one stood out really to me because like with regular React, making a request like that's very easy. And for the most part, it's pretty much the same in React Native, but there is a bit of key difference when communicating to uh, to Express API compared to doing it with a regular React website app. And I'm gonna just kind of show, I'm gonna show you how to do, how to set it up properly so you don't encounter anything like a network error because you set up the fetch link incorrectly and yeah, let's get into it. So I'm gonna get started on sharing my screen. And let's get right into it. So I wanna do something really quickly. Okay, so actually it's actually set up for me. So usually, say for example, you wanna fetch it as soon as your page loads in. So you'd set up something like a use effect and then have an async function to fetch the data and then use the data as needed for your web page. Usually, like when you're testing with your own API with an ex like Express API, like I set up kind of one right here, where it just it, all it's going to do is going to send me that text when I make a request to uh, make a get request to this route. And usually, uh, you just put in the link in the route you want to make a request to, whatever it may be. And I'm doing it with Axios, and it'd be fine. This would be perfectly more than okay with the regular React app, but with React Native. This will throw a network error. And this is because, so this is a React Native app, it's gonna be geared more towards Android and iOS. And those systems don't run on the same uh, system that, that uh, localhost is used for in like computers. So you can't use localhost, but what you can use instead to be able to still communicate with your server, no matter what kind of device you're on, you use your IP address. So you replace localhost with your IP address, make sure also keep the port that the server is running on or the API more specifically. So that there's, uh, so you don't get any issues about that. But you're gonna replace localhost with your IP address. If you're on Windows, one way you do it is you open up the CMD, aka the command prompt. You type in IP config. I'm gonna kind of move it over here so because there's a little bit of secret information. You click enter on it, and you'll get some information back. I'll kind of show you a sneak peek of some of the stuff on the side. So right here, it's kind of hard to see. You see something that says IPv4 address. This is the thing you want to look for. Because right next to it, you see, yes, you see a bunch of dots. But past those dots, you'll see four numbers separated by dots. And those numbers represent your IP address. And you need to put that right there. And I'm going to copy it for safekeeping. But with that, that's all you need to do. For, say, you're on Mac, um, if you're on Mac, I have this article by Hello Tech that explains how to get to that point. You copy that number, you see it's one set, another number, another number. Those are four sets, right? So because you see dots separating each set, that's one, two, three, four. And then you can also find it with Linux if you're a Linux user. Most likely you're going to use your public IP because you can't use your private IP to communicate to a server, which requires you to go over the internet to talk to it. So we're not going to use a private for the most part. It's going to be your public. Once you get your IP though, replace it right here add your ip right here ip goes here then once you got that the next thing we need to look for is in the back end so on your express api make sure you set this header once you set this specific header access control allow origin it basically allows your your uh your application full access to this api because we fixed that link we're able to connect to it but not fully they want us to make sure we have authenticated access to it basically and this asterisk basically saying any website can make a request to this API. You're gonna wanna, of course, change this just so your website so no other web page can use this data against you and such. Make sure to replace the asterisk with your actual URL link for your live site. But once you get this set up, it's fully set up to where you can actually make requests with Axios in your React Native application and pretty much with most authentication or uh, request methods. And yeah, so let me close this and go back here. I'll kind of show you how it works. And yeah, so with that, I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a second. I hope that helped. Um, don't be afraid to ask me questions. I'm more than happy to help answer any questions you got. I always love helping. If you want to schedule some sessions sometime soon, I'd always happy to schedule. We could talk even more about this kind of stuff. And yeah, talk to you guys soon. And we'll be continuing to update you guys and posting more great content to help you guys become even better developers. Okay, talk to you soon.